Most dog training methods focus heavily on corrections and high value treats given at the perfect moment. But there's a significant piece missing when it comes to truly treating your dog's reactivity. In this video, I'll walk you through why it's crucial to understand how your dog came to be reactive in the first place, why your dog's reactivity might seem impossible to fix with traditional methods, and most importantly, how to use that understanding to resolve your dog's reactivity permanently. When your dog feels threatened by a particular stimuli, their autonomic nervous system triggers the adrenal gland leading to an adrenaline release. This creates a fight or flight response. However, because your dog is confined to a lead, the option to flee is taken away, leaving them with only one choice to fight. And this is why most dogs are more reactive on a lead than when they're off it. In those moments, your dog might seem like a completely different animal. Their eyes glaze over and they behave in ways that you've never seen before. And if this sounds familiar, you're not alone. And if you've tried to fix everything without success, I'm here to help. What I'm about to tell you might be something you haven't heard before, and it could be the key to finally resolving your dog's reactivity for good. But before we dive into solutions, let's talk about what makes it so hard to fix your dog's reactivity. And the culprit, adrenaline. Adrenaline does a few things that make traditional training methods less effective. Firstly, when adrenaline kicks in, it temporarily suppresses your dog's appetite, which is why food might not work as a motivator. Think of it like being on a roller coaster. The last thing you're doing is thinking about eating while you're on the nemesis at Alton Towers. Number two, adrenaline is also a potent painkiller, which means that corrections or physical reprimand might not register with your dog as intended. If you've ever been in a fight and taken a punch to the face, you might recall that it didn't hurt nearly as much as you'd expect. Until about an hour later, when the adrenaline wears off, that's when the pain really kicks in and you regret telling the bouncer at Oceana that you saw his mum last night. And number three, adrenaline also partially closes off the ear canal. And that's to protect their eardrums. Shouting commands probably won't be effective either. A friend of mine who once served in the army had an explosion go off just a few feet from his head. For all intents and purposes, he should have been rendered deaf. But thanks to the flood of adrenaline, his hearing was actually fine. Though he did lose his left arm. But as for his ears, they were protected by that adrenaline rush. So if you sat there shouting at your screen saying, yes, 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 then don't worry, I'm not just going to identify the problems like a lot of dog trainers. I'm going to give you the answers too. You've probably tried various methods, clicker training, corrections with different types of collars, slip leads, head halties, hand feeding, and more. Here's something you might not know. These methods can actually all work. If they didn't, they wouldn't be so widely used. But there's one crucial piece that's missing from all of these approaches, and it's usually the difference in solving your dog's reactivity for good and having to worry about what's around the corner every five seconds. And that secret missing piece is actually creating a healthy addiction that is equally as powerful to replace the old unhealthy one. Consider this. Have you ever seen those stories about former addicts who go on to run seven marathons in seven days or compete in some sort of crazy extreme sport? And that's because they haven't necessarily dropped their addiction at all. They've just funneled it into a healthy one instead. The same principle applies to training your dog and their reactivity. The only way to truly create this healthy addiction isn't through food, corrections or sniffing games. It's actually through play. And I'm not just talking about any kind of play and definitely not fetch. To be effective, the game needs to be competitive, genuine and capable of eliciting the same intense emotions that your dog experiences during their reactive episodes. So how does that look in practice? Let's dive into the key components of effective, competitive and most importantly, addictive play. First things first, choose a toy that your dog doesn't have constant access to. When a toy is always available, not only does it lose its value, but it also can lead to your dog destroying it and rehearsing destructive behavior. Ideally, choose a toy that your dog can both chase and tug. While fetch is a great way to give your dog some exercise, it doesn't offer the competitive elements that tug of war does. Pro tip, attach a toy to a lead to create a makeshift flirt pole, which can ignite your dog's prey drive more effectively than actually you holding the toy. Number two, the toy should be something your dog can grip comfortably with and it's not going to snag their tooth or hurt their mouth. Avoid anything too hard that could cause discomfort or damage their teeth. A leather rag or a similar soft toy can be a great choice if you want to get your dog really invested early doors. Number three is something I call the jealousy effect. To make your dog want the toy even more, you need to pretend that they're actually not allowed to have it. Dogs, much like toddlers, often desire something more when they think it's out of reach or just because someone else has something. If you've ever seen children play, you might notice this phenomenon when a child wants a toy simply because another child has it, even when they have the exact same toy themselves. You can use this principle to make the toy even more enticing to your dog. 
Number four, always move the toy away from your dog, mimicking the natural behavior of prey. Remember, the rabbit never runs towards the dog, and the same should apply to your play sessions. Don't try and force the toy on your dog or into their mouth by chasing them. Instead, always let them chase the toy. Number five, keep the game competitive. The game should be won by the smallest of margins. Imagine playing Sunday League football, that's soccer to you Yanks, where you lose every game by 10-0. Your motivation would quickly diminish. Conversely, if you win every game by 10-0, the lack of competition would also reduce your enthusiasm. When playing with your dog, ensure that the outcome of tug of war is always a close call, whether your dog wins or you do. Number six, and my favorite, channel your inner John Cena. And this might sound strange, but bear with me. Remember when you were a kid and you thought WWE wrestling was real? The wrestler's dramatic reactions made every move seem incredibly intense. And even though it was all staged, and when you eventually found out that it wasn't real, it was literally the worst day of your life. Yeah. Me too. When playing with your dog, you need to adopt a similar mindset. Your dog should feel that you're fully invested in the game and that you want the toy just as much as they do. Your dog should feel like their efforts are truly creating a genuine physical emotional response with their actions and efforts in attaining the toy. So adding in some theatrical flair to your wins and your losses can transform a simple game into a highly engaging, healthy addiction for your dog. You might feel like a bit of a dog here, but if I can do it, you can too. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, never finish the game when your dog gets bored. Think about it like this. If you order dessert at a restaurant and they bring you a small portion that's just enough to satisfy you, but leaves you wanting more, you're likely to look forward to your next visit. On the other hand, if you go to the supermarket and you buy yourself a large tub of ice cream, devour it all in one sitting and end up feeling sick, you probably won't want to look at ice cream again for a while, never mind eat it. That same logic applies to your dog. Ending the game while they're still eager to play ensures that they'll be even more excited for the next session. To summarize, by focusing on play that's competitive, engaging, and emotionally intense, you can create a healthy addiction in your dog that replaces their reactive behavior. Alongside a strategic behavioral program, this is often the largest missing piece when it comes to behavior rehabilitation. This approach goes beyond managing reactivity with corrections and treats. It's about truly addressing the root cause and providing your dog a positive outlet for their expression. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you're interested in working with me, you can check out the link in the description. Just wait till I teach you this concept for recall.